Ultimate Cookie! Ultimate Cookie! Hey everybody, Teching101 here, and welcome back to Ultimate Cooking, the only show on YouTube that actually takes cooking to the next level. There might be a few other shows that prepare food the super way, or the mega way, or even the uber way, but this is the only show that shows you the ultimate way of cooking. Alright, so today we're going to be making a cake. What kind of cake? Well, the only kind of cake that really matters, chocolate cake. You can think of any other cake? No, you can't, because this is the only one that really matters. And this is a pretty simple recipe. Gotta, first, we gotta open this box. We gotta open this box, guys. We gotta open the box. Come on! Gotta open the box. There we go. We open the box. The box is opened. All right, there we go. We got the powder. That's some nice powder right there. Okay. Okay, good. Check that shit out right there. All right. Next thing, oil. Now, there's a bunch of, like, units of measurement before all of these ingredients, but that's just trying to screw you over. It's okay, you just gotta pour shit in there. Just pour the oil in, just all of the oil. Actually, that's not enough, just all of the oil. As for water, <laughs> water. You don't need to measure water. You know how much water is in the human body? It's like 99% water. Just throw a bunch of it in there, okay. Now we're moving on, oh, butter spray too. Just, just a little bit. Okay, not a lot of butter spray, but just a little bit to get you by, okay. So now eggs. Uh, three eggs? Nah, we could just go with like, I don't know, all of them. And you don't even need to crack the eggs, you know, you can, I mean, you can if you want, it's, it's, it's not necessary, but there you go. Um, alright, now this recipe says cook at 350 degrees for 15 minutes, but if we just use math, you don't even have to really think about it too much, you know, 300, uh, 15 minutes at 350, so that's like 7 minutes at 700, and so that would be like one minute at like, I don't know, 1400 degrees, right? So, using our heads on that one. So I'm gonna set the oven here for uh, 1400 degrees. Okay, so now we're all ready to throw the cake in our pan. Get the hell out of here. Just gonna toss it all in there. Oh yeah, that's good. That's some good, check that out right there. That is the ultimate way of preparing a cake. All right, now I'm just gonna do a little bit of editing magic here for you guys and do a little bit of a ring a bam bam shazam and there we go there's the final product the ultimate triple chocolate cake um once again this was created using the ultimate cooking method i hope you take this tutorial to heart um and uh, i appreciate your feedback for the culinary experience no I, I i think i'm the best cook in the world the best baker anyway easily i mean i could probably be the best cook too but uh check us back here next time we'll be making brownies yeah All right, everybody, just letting you know that this is a very precariously perched setup that could easily come crashing down at some point during the video. I'm surprised I got it to be where it is, but all right, let's just take that as it goes. All right, hey, everybody, Teching here, and welcome to my discussion video on student number 10 of class 1A, Rikido Sato, also known as the sweets hero, Sugar Man. You know what's cool with having a uh, sugar-based superhero? It's after he busts up the bank robbers and, you know, punches the, the robber square in the jaw and he gets carted away by the police he then offers all the people that he saved delicious cupcakes here you go kids little, little boy little girl here you go this is uh you witnessing my awesomeness as sweets man here you go remember to brush your teeth don't have too many now um but yeah Rika Osato I think he is the single most underdeveloped character in all of class 1a out of every single character, I think the one that we know the least about in terms of personality, in terms of backstory, um, relatives, you know, all of that stuff, I, I think I think Rikido Sato is the most underdeveloped one. Even Koda, the, the quiet, shy kid that talks to animals. At least we got a little bit more with him during the end of semester test when he was teamed up with Jiro uh, when they were fighting Present Mike, and he had that moment where he's like, I, I, need to, I need to face my fears, and I need to fight because Jiro is bleeding she's gonna get hurt if I don't do something and then we had the flashback with Coda's mom at least we had something with Coda with Sato I he's just average he's just there a lot of times you just see him in the background and it's like oh yeah that guy yeah, the guy with the sugar quirk his quirk is sugar rush all it does is the more sugar he eats the buffer he gets but also the stupider he gets so it's actually kind of similar to Kaminari's quirk a little bit, the electrocution ability, where if he overuses his electrical abilities, he short circuits and goes kind of dumb. Uh, it's, it's not quite the exact same way with Sato. Um, it's more of just like he eats a lot of sugar, gets super buff, and he's just like, Yeah, let's do this! Beat him up! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Beat him up! Yeah! 
you know, I, I don't understand basic ma basic mathematics or grammar skills. You know, that's that's essentially what it does for him. So, you know, his quirk is the thing we know the most about him, but it's not really an intricate ability. Um, I think the single crowning achievement that Sato has under his belt, actually, aside from the fact that he looks like Kid Muscle from Kininku Man. Uh, remember Kininku Man? Remember Ultimate Muscle? I mean, I did the, the parody with the ultimate cooking, but I, I completely forgot about that show until this video. And he's based off of the character with the, the fish lips and everything, so, and, and he gets muscular and when he fights. So that's obviously the basis for his character design. And I'm like, okay, cool, we can roll with that. I just hope Horikoshi uses him further in the future. I'm hoping for an arc where Horikoshi takes, like, the most underused characters of Class 1A and just throws them into the limelight. I would be perfectly fine with that. You probably wouldn't. Let's hope it... Okay, well, as long as it's not, like, a super long arc. I'm not saying an arc as long as the Chisake arc is all focused on Koda and Hagakure and Sato. But, like, you throw me a quick, like, five, six chapter arc where those three characters, like the most underused characters of Class 1A, are kind of thrust into the limelight, and, and Bakugo and Todoroki and uh, and Deku kind of get pushed to the side for that one, like, the few, like, five or six chapters, I'd be okay with that little mini-arc to see what they can do. I don't know, like, they're all hanging out after school, and then a villain attacks the town, and they're like, we're the only heroes around, we gotta, we have those provisional licenses, let's put them to the test. You know, something like that would be all it would really take to show a little bit more of what they're, you know, what they're good at, a little bit more about their personality and everything because as far as Sato's concerned like I said his crowning achievement I think is during the when they were moving into the dorms and he won the first annual UA dorm off or whatever because of his quirk sugar rush he has to be really good at baking sweets so he was making a chiffon cake and he gave a little bit of cake to everybody in the class and all the girls were like oh we all voted for you because that cake was delish so okay yeah also that scene where all the girls were hanging out just drooling I think that could be be taken another way but that was a cute scene and Sato gets I think Horikoshi did that because he was like man who's gonna win this dorm off you know what let's make it be Sato because I feel bad I never use Sato for anything I forget he's there half the time let's have him win so he was like blushing and stuff because he's he's the typical kind of like macho guy that's the kind of air he presents but he, he's not really all about that he seems to be very at least well liked amongst his classmates you know, doesn't stand out much, but, you know, he's he's a good friend, willing to help you out, you know, he's, he's there. You know, it's just kind of like the average people in school. Like, there's people like me that were huge nerds and were not very popular, and then there's the popular kids, but then there's the people that are just kind of... They, they don't really stand out at all. No one really knows about... Oh, yeah, yeah, that kid. I think I have science class with him. He sits, like, in the back, and he doesn't really say much. I mean... I guess he's okay. You know, that's the kind of guy Sato is. Even on the, the um, written exams, he scored 12 out of 20. So even his score was almost... Even his class number 10 is right in the middle of him. So out of 20 students, he's number 10. So it's like average right in the middle. Okay. But yeah, uh, let's talk about Sugar Rush. I, I think the most common joke I hear about it is that he's the diabetes superhero. Because in order to activate his quirk, he has to consume a large amount of sugar. His costume is pretty basic. It really just looks like a wrestling leotard with like the like a, like a luchador mask over it, kind of once again as an homage to King Kin Kin Man, Ultimate Muscle. Um, and he has these little like uh, tubes on his belt that are all filled up with sugar, just pure granulated, you know, sugar. And he just downs that whole thing at once, and then he gets really buff like oh yeah and then his cognitive function decreases the more sugar he consumes and then i'm sure he has like a certain amount like having this quirk his whole life i'm sure he's figured out like how low my cognitive function could get and i could still fight you know because you th you'd figure like if he really wanted to he could eat like way more sugar and get even more buff but there's like a limit where his buffness is really good but his like, his cognitive function is so low, he wouldn't be a, a, an asset in battle, or he might be attacking his teammates, too, or something. So, he figured out the exact amount, and then he consumes it. And I, a lot of people are saying, like, man, his quirk is the, is the stupidest quirk ever, because he risks getting diabetes every time he uses it. Here's the thing you have to understand about My Hero Academia, though, and how quirks work, is that quirks are sort of adapted to the body that they're being used by. 
an exception to this being uh, all for one. No, not all for one. The except well, that's kind of an exception for everything, but an exception to this being one for all with Izuku and everything because he didn't have a quirk. So when he got a quirk, all of a sudden, you know, it was breaking his body and everything. But that's that's a lone exception, okay? Usually, when you're born with your quirk, your body is adapted to it. That would be like going around saying, Kaminari, you can't use your quirk because if you use your electrocution, then your your nervous system will get thrown out of whack or your spinal cord will get electrocuted and you'll become a paraplegic or something or you, you, you know you oh uh kirishima you can't use your hardening quirk because if you do that then your skin will get damaged permanently or something like their bodies are adapted to use their quirks guys that's the whole point of it okay kaminari can use his electrocution a quirk without worrying about like normal things that would occur if you and i got electrocuted so i like to think it's the same thing with sato whereas sato can consume as much sugar as he wants really and the only drawback with that is the lower cognitive function it's not he doesn't have to worry about any health risks because look at him he's buff he's a buff dude even without activating his quirk he's looks like he's the perfect you know ideal of health you know for that age um you, you know if, if if his body was the same as a normal person's body in our world and he has to eat because he, he eats cakes constantly and all the snack cakes and ho-hos and and you want to know something really funny about my childhood? I used to think ho-hos were... I used to think there was a snack cake called dildos. And I was mistaking them for ho-hos. And what's even more confusing is I was in the grocery store with my mom once. And uh, uh, she asked what I wanted. And I'm like, can we get a box of dildos? And she's like, what? And I'm like, you know, dildos, the snack cake. And she's like, what the f... How did you... Wait, do you mean ho-hos? I'm like, yeah, those things. That was awkward. But yeah, he eats that shit constantly. Cakes, brownies, cookies. And he's super buff, so... I like to think that's the situation there. Okay, now, a few things about his quirk that I do find a little weird is that, um... Okay, why even bother with the cakes and everything? Like, a lot of training uh, we see Sato doing, like, at the training camp, we see him, like, stuffing his face full of cakes and, and drinking a lot of soda, like, gotta, gotta master my quirk. I'm assuming the way he's trying to master his quirk is to get the most buffness while decreasing the amount of cognitive loss, okay? So, getting to the point where I can consume a bunch of sweets and sugar, but also maintain my awareness and my intellect, okay? That would probably be the best way that he could learn to master his quirk, right? But I'm like, why even bother making cakes or cookies or brownies if all you need, like, you obviously won't be able to carry around an entire bakery on, like, an easy bake oven on your back when you're going into battle. When Sato goes into battle with his hero costume, like I said, he just has a bunch of containers of sugar. So, my, he, I bring this up because he mentions in, in the dorm when he was making the cake, you know, I have to learn how to make sweets because, you know, store-bought sweets can get rather expensive. Ha, 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 it's all for my quirk. I'm like, yeah, but just, dude, go and buy, like, a giant bag of sugar. And if we've already established that sugar doesn't actually harm you in the same ways, like, even a lot of sugar can hurt a normal human, just buy a giant bag of sugar. And whenever you want to train with your quirk, take a big measuring cup and just scoop it and just... Um, sugar rush! Boom! You know, that's that's how you do it. But, I mean, hey, I mean, once again, maybe you're just... If you had the ability to eat all the sugar you wanted without any negative effects, other than you getting a little stupid, and then, you know, after a while, that even goes away. You know, you, you get the sugar rush boost, and then after that runs its course, you return to normal. Um, if that was your body, I mean, I would, yeah, go and eat as, fuck it, eat as many cakes and brownies as you'd want. I, I honestly stay away from a lot of sweets. I don't eat a lot of cakes and stuff, and I'm not even going to be eating these, honestly. I get enough of my sugar from iced teas, so I stay away from pretty much a lot of other stuff. Um... Yeah, but, uh, right, that's, that's Sugar Rush, just a basic, uh, boosting reinforcement quirk, uh, while he's in his Sugar Rush form, he was able to, like, when him and Kirishima were teamed up against Cementos during the end of semester test, um, he was able to punch through solid walls of cement and everything, even just with his, just his, uh, gloves and stuff, he doesn't have any kind of, like, really things special, like brass knuckles, although that would be better for his costume, his costume's kind of, kind of bland, honestly, but, um, yeah, just with his fists alone and his sheer sugar-charged muscle, he was able to break down these cement barricades and all that stuff. Um, oh, what else? Uh, during the sports fest, I think he ranked fairly well in the race. 
uh, once again, kind of average. Uh, he, in, the, in the cavalry battle, he was teamed up with Hagakure and Jiro and Koda. And once again, we have the moment where Hagakure's uh, naked breasts are exposed for all to not see because she's invincible. But they're, they're right there up in Sato and Koda's faces, you know, running around, bouncing all over. The, okay, fine, whatever. It's just about as bouncy as a chiffon cake, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, doesn't really do much else in the sports fest there. Uh, end of semester test. I talked about that. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, during the provisional license exam, I, I also don't think he did anything important there. I, I don't think he learned any new moves. Um, like, we got to see a bunch of new moves from the students, but I don't think he was one of them. I don't think he really focused on him all that much during the provisional license exam. I mean, we get to see him, you know, pass and everything like everyone else, but... Okay, anyway, uh, I, I did want to bring up one more thing, is that, um... What, what, what are the different kinds of sugar? You know, because there's not just one kind of sugar. There's, like, granulated sugar. There's, there's like, the pure cane sugar. There's sugar in the raw. There's, there's brown sugar. Like, what if the different kinds of sugar does it affect him? Because brown sugar is a little bit more, like, thick than normal sugar. It, like, congeals in, like, a ball and stuff. Like, you got to hit it against the counter if it's, like, really tough to, like, break it apart. So could, could um, Sato, like, take a bunch of brown sugar and, and like, compress it into a ball and just bite into that at once and just does he get a better power up if it's sugar in the raw or if it's if it's light brown sugar if it's granulated sugar like how does this work you know i, I don't know it, what even with granulated sugar with pure cane sugar like that's pure cane sugar granulated that's just white sugar this is pure cane sugar that's like a little bit more like tinted this is like for coffee and stuff so it's like yeah how's that work but overall, I'd say a quirk that allows you to eat all the sugar you want without getting the diabetes, um, that's a pretty useful quirk, I'd say. I would like to have that, you know? Is that the end of the video already? No, 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 that can't be the end of the video. Come on, man. You gotta give me something else to work with, Horikoshi. All right, all right. If, if I can't, if there's nothing else for me to mention, we'll just go into fanfiction territory. All right, bear with me now. One night. Sato is at the dorms, Heights Alliance, right? He's in his room, he's watching TV, and he's like, hmm, you know what? I'm kind of hungry. I think I'm going to make some brownies. And he gets up, and he goes and gets all of his things ready, which, by the way, that oven in his dorm, that is a total violation, okay? I do not know the policies of UA, but I was in college not long ago, and I didn't stay in a dorm. I commuted, but I knew plenty of friends that were in dorms, so I was in my fair share of dorm rooms throughout my times in college, and you're not allowed to have a freaking oven in your dorm room. You're also not even allowed to have, like, candles lit and stuff. They're very stingy about that. They don't want to start a fire, okay? So really, in dorm rooms, all you're usually allowed to have is, like, a microwave. Even, like, toaster ovens and stuff. They're usually like, no, we can't risk that fire hazard. But anyway, yeah, he's probably breaking some rules here, but it's okay. Anyway, he gets up to make some brownies, and he's like, oh, okay, I've got some sugar. Got oh, damn it, I'm out of uh, vegetable oil. All right, I'm going to go to the store and buy some. So he's like, okay, guys, see ya. It's like, okay, Sato, we'll see ya. We'll make some brownies, and that'll be fun. So he's walking down the street, going to the store to get some freaking vegetable oil so he can make some uh, some brownies for his, for his friends, okay? So he's walking down the street, just scrumbly bum bum bum, and he goes, into the store in the grocery store he gets the oil he's buying it then all of a sudden boom just huge explosion and this guy rocks out and he's like a he's like a giant lizard crossed with a i don't know uh um a, 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 an antelope a snake antelope villain all right and he shows up and his quirk is just like he could spring horns all over his body which is also an antelope and a snake and he's like i am going to destroy this place because i was fired from here last month or some stupid reason and he just starts wrecking the store and sato's like not if i have anything to say about it because i'm a i'm a provisional hero i i'm a semi-pro i'm sato so he runs into the freaking sh the baking aisle he grabs a giant thing of granulated sugar and just ah Sugar rush! Boom! And he just jumps up and he punches that villain square to the ground, one punch man Saitama style, and then, oh, yeah, I am awesome! You know, and gives it a second for his cognitive function to return, and he's like, oh, yeah, I am good hero guy, I defeat bad villain. Oh, oh, mm. I apologize for that. My quirk makes me a tad, tad uh, rudimentary. Anyway, here is the money for the oil. Thank you for your uh, patronage. I'm going to leave now. And he goes back and he bakes the brownies and everyone's just like, Oh, Sato, anything happened? And he's like, Nope, nothing. Just making brownies. Here you go, guys. <sighs> The end of the story is that they're pot brownies. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I got.
God, Horikoshi, please do something with Sato, please. He's literally had nothing. He, he's, oh, oh, during the battle trial, he was teamed up with Koda, but nothing happens there. All we get's a scene where he's just like, yeah, uh-huh, let's, let's do this, yeah! And then he's all, like, buff and intimidating, and then Koda's off to the side like, eh. So that does nothing more than really just kind of show us a basic of their, their general personality and stuff, but that's, that's all we got there. You guys gonna help me out with this or anything else? Literally anything else? Is is there a chapter where Sato like steps on a piece of gum? Something to work with? No? Okay. Um, but Sugar Hero, hopefully he'll have a moment in the story. I would love them to be all fighting a bit, because you know that's probably gonna happen at some point. All of the Class 1A kids team up to fight against one villain. You know that's going to happen at some point in the series. Maybe it might be the traitor. Who knows? But it's like all the students are banding together, and then the one that gets the final hit off is Sato. They're like, okay, Sato, we're going to weaken him. And then when he's reeling and like, oh, I'm almost defeated, that's when Sato busts in with freaking Sugar Rush and just bam, just finishing move. And then everyone's like, Sato, good job. We couldn't done it without you. Even though we have Kirishima, who has a similar ability, and also we have uh, a bunch of other really, you know, but in terms of like just a physical power up, you know, he's, he's, he's up there, I guess. All right. I, I guess I've been dragging this on long enough. I got nothing else. Even I'm at a loss. He, he, Sato broke me. Sato broke me. I'm usually the king when it comes to making long videos about little stuff to go on. But with Sato, we really have nothing to go on. Um, I thought that I, I, I was going to talk about his quirk, and I thought that was going to last longer, but it didn't. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, I guess, and nothing else to do, so let's go to the D20. All right. Okay, guys, here we go. D20 time. All right. I, I'm put it over here so I don't have to make this, you know, get obscured. Okay. So, I really want either Suyu or Uraraka. All right, I'm, I'm in the mood to talk about those characters. I've already decided what I'm going to do for Suyu's video. I'm going to try to catch an actual frog so I can have a little froggy friend up here. So I'm hoping Suyu is next. Uraraka, I would love to talk about Uraraka. I'm, I'm, I'm just really not ho I'm hoping it's not like Koda or, or Shoji or something, okay? I, I want to talk about another girl, all right? So uh, we got to space out the girls of Class 1A because there's not very many of them. We don't want to get them all out at once, but... um. All right, you guys, are you guys ready? Let's do this. Okay, gearing up the D20. Roll it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna close my eyes. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open my eyes. Am I gonna like what I see? I hope I like what I see. Come on, number three. Come on, number three. Twelve. Who's twelve? Twelve is Jiro. We already had her. Okay, roll it again. Thirteen is Sarah. We already had him. Roll it again. Thirteen again. Roll it again. Six. Who is six? Six is Ojiro. Oh, ah. Can we get a mulligan on this? Can I roll it again? <laughs> no, okay, fine. I guess that'll just mean it's all the better when we finally get to sue you or Uraraka or, or Ashido, I guess. All right, fine. Next time we're talking about Ojiro, the tail superhero. Oh, man, how am I going to do that one? I'm going to buy like a fake tail. Well, I, that, that should be rather easy, because I am a, maybe a furry, perhaps, maybe. Later, everyone. <laughs>